Good afternoon, evening, morning, everyone. It is December 1st. Welcome to today's Mycroft DevSync meeting. As is tradition, Derek, go first, buddy. What's going on? All right. Well, today was um, kind of a step back on my CAD stuff. Uh, I realized the way that I was attaching the grill to the, the main body had some um, physical um, interference with the pie. And uh, so I had to rework that. So I spent most of the day reworking how that, that kind of attaches together. Um, so yeah, just uh, making progress, but you know, it takes time. But um, hopefully be printing by, by the end of the week. So yeah, I didn't do anything uh, additional to the Wi-Fi setup stuff. I added the, um, Chris, if you, if you um, look in the Figma from, I don't know, it hasn't changed in, in a long time, but I did add the progress, the connected and failure states on the Figma. And so when we get to that, they're there, real simple. Um, but yeah, that's about all I've been up to. All right. Mr. Hansen, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, so today I added to the network utilities uh, in, on the feature Mark II boot branch, a network manager. So this has taken what Ken had done with the Dbus connection and put it in. So now you can create this network manager and you can ask it, is the network connected uh, or is the internet connected? And it'll tell you either one by pinging the, the Dbus and getting a response. I actually, it was a happenstance that it worked out today that my internet kept going out. So I got to test it quite frequently, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, I'm not 100% confident that the, it, it has five states, right? Zero to four. And the fourth, the number four, fifth state says full connectivity. I don't know what frequency it rechecks the internet, though. Because uh, there were times where the end, my I could see in my browser I couldn't contact anything, but it still reported full to connectivity. But if I if I yanked the cable out, it would say I had limited because I assume it's looking at it sees I have Docker connections, and thinks there's still a network there. So it's it's not the perfect uh, thing. I, I assume on the Mark II though it'll be okay, uh, since there's only you know one WLAN device right that that we're expecting. So it should be all or none on that, but we may need to do what Ken had done. We may need to drill down into devices if if it matters, you know, uh, connectivity, you know, versus Docker's version of a network. Well, be careful. There's code in there to specifically exclude like LXBR0, which I believe is the internal connection to the AW Connect container. Okay. I haven't tried this yet on, on the actual Mark II uh, inside the container. So I'll see you. I'll see tomorrow how that works out. Yeah, I thought I noticed too that there was a um, some method or some property about can you even oh connectivity check available? There's a boolean flag for that, so maybe okay. we need to check that before we even. I wonder uh, if that's false. What does what does the connectivity check return then? Probably unknown, I guess. Now the code I'm uh, using to monitor the states, I take it, that's not able to pick up the uh, signal strength, correct? You'd have to no, it's 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 just a yeah okay yeah yeah we just we we just started. We're gonna add. This is something we we added these first two things to, and you know I want to add some, you know, uh, like the access point checking to it and signal strength checking. So. There's, it's just a, a beginning, it's kind of a proof of concept of something we can, that's in core that we can use to, um, you know, do some of these debus checks from skills or from enclosure well, service. Yeah, the real acid test is to have it burned in the build and be logging so that when you go through a fresh bring up, you can see all the different states that the connect container is going through or just more technical that, that's putting the network manager through over the debus. So that's where you should be able to see whether it's got the access point active or not, whether it's 
uh, failed to connect to the access point or succeeded and things like that. And I don't know, you know, which code you guys are using, but the code I had, um, it monitored a, a value that, like I said, I saw three states, disconnected, active, and uh, config, and I assume config was the access point. But, uh, but I'm sure you guys will be on top of it. But again, the real, the real test is to have it in the build so that the very first bring up, if you purposely like type in a bad password and go through that process again, you should be able to figure out from that in your times kind of what was going on and what you were seeing and then you could be able to react to that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah the other so, thing is to have some logging in, in, enabled as well so that we can, you know, you can't SSH into your device until after you have the connection, of course. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to have all that logged so we can see how what happened. You know, yeah, well, what we're the, the code I gave you uh, creates a new log in um, in var log Mycroft called time status or something or Wi-Fi status. But the point is, um, if you run and you boot and you can't successfully connect, you can still mount that device on your laptop and look at that log file. Yeah, so that's yeah, my, that's in the latest oh, build. So um, you should, you know, it, it's logging already. I've, you know, gone in and had a look at some of them. Um, I don't know that it's actually going to give us anything different to just manually sticking it on the devices and and booting. Um, and I question the uh, 15 second timer there. It's probably a little too tight. But I also question the one second pairing startup. And I've been meaning to correct that as well. Uh, well, and that's something we need to probably talk about or at least make some stabs at is have, what what do these timeouts, what, what should they be, you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, um, you know, if we, how many retries do we do, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about the fact that we don't recover from AW Connect failures or bugs. Um, so we don't have any control over that process short of a hard boot, but we need to be able to detect if you're in that condition. Um, my uh, machine that I got, which had a build from, I guess, Wayne that I just unpacked today, um, did not boot at all, did not connect at all. Well, it connected to the Wi-Fi network fine. It just won't pair. Oh, right. Did, did, did you try rebooting? Oh, I spent an hour with it. Uh, I reburned okay. uh, the image, actually, to the one that's in the uh, dev team chat that Gez posted yesterday to try that one. Because yeah, we were seeing that pairing issue in oh, yeah. at the summit where we it wouldn't pair um, until you rebooted. No, even if I reboot, it won't pair. Okay, well that's an old build. It's from like I don't know a while ago. So I got a new one that was posted. Hopefully, it won't have that problem. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, it would have been from early November, late October. Yeah, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time troubleshooting old builds since we're working on this startup sequence. I'm just gonna <laughs> get our changes done and, and troubleshoot that. <laughs> But you got it. You got it to go, Ken. You got it on online. It's working now. No. no okay. It's got finished burning a new image, the latest image. Okay. And uh, I had to step out right before the meeting, but when our meeting is over, I'll probably give it a try. All right. But, but it's powering up and and giving you audio and everything. Oh, uh, yeah, and it recognizes me and talks to me and everything. Yeah. Okay. Good. Cool. All right, Mike. Is there anything else you wanted to add? I uh, would just say, so tomorrow the, the plan is to pro probably in the, uh, what we're calling the HAL, the enclosure mark two, put put something in there that spins up a thread that does this this connectivity check and uh, emits bus events. Um, something that Derek could catch and, and potentially do something with. Or or I guess he could also call directly to the network manager. I'm not sure how we want to, how we want to do that. So we'll figure it out tomorrow. Um, right. Should I remove the startup script version of it today? Not yet. We don't. We aren't. We're on an, not even on the Mark II branch yet. We're just. Oh, you're just on. Okay. All right. Yeah, we. I, I, we I branched mean, off of. I I did get the. You know how we were saying man, it'd suck if like the thing ran, randomly went off in the middle of the night. That happened to me last night. So, uh, I. I'm I'm considering at least removing the reboot thing, um, 
for the short term because yeah having my device reboot in the middle of the night and start asking to set up wi-fi is quite not nice <laughs> did you actually have to set up wi-fi or did it automatically connect no it it needed to set up wi-fi why i don't know <laughs> i haven't i haven't so figured that out yet after it lost its wi-fi it didn't reconnect automatically yeah, well, one of the things that I'm seeing um, is that uh, the, the system connection, like the network connections are getting wiped on reboot for some reason at the moment. Um, and Yeah, I get that a lot too. You get that a lot? Hmm. Shouldn't, shouldn't we reach out to Panacore if this is happening? Yeah, I did yesterday. Yeah, I haven't, haven't looked to see what the response is yet. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's like, it definitely didn't happen previously. So, um, you know, whether it's the change in the AW connect container or whether it's somehow the, um, what we're, what we're doing on the D bus. I don't know if the, if we're emitting any commands to the D bus or we're just listening. Um, yeah. I mean, you have to admit, admit messages to ask for the, the status, but it shouldn't be modifying anything. Hmm. Yeah, so my assumption is that it's some issue in the AW Connect container. That's my guess, too, because I've been having this problem since before Ken's code got in there, so... Okay, cool. No, I think what's most disturbing is that we've got code in there that detected the outage and rebooted and it didn't reconnect automatically. That's the Yeah, and that's all part of the boot sequence stuff, so yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it figured out. All right, um, Ken, since you're yapping, you want to yap some more? Wish I had something to yap about. <laughs> I got sidetracked today on doing a document and on trying to get this new Mark II working but I also am in the throes of trying to get the uh, Mimic 1 to behave like a real TTS module so that it can peacefully coexist with everybody else. Uh, as I mentioned, there's other issues um, regarding uh, just the way the architecture works and starting and stopping the audio service and people stepping on each other. I'm not going to address that. Uh, so when it goes haywire, um, all it'll do is make sure that it's not being corruptible through the TTS path, but it still has other issues. So that's where I'm at. All right. What's up, guys? Um, so I got the device booting much nicer yesterday. Um, we The Mark, feature Mark II branch is now uh, fully up to date with dev. Um, because we had included a bunch of fixes and rather than just cherry picking individual ones I figured we may as well just bite the bullet and get it all working anyway uh, and that was seemed to be the right call um, uh, yeah as I, as I mentioned I'm seeing the, the network connections get wiped and I'm also seeing the identity file get wiped on boot I think the identity file getting wiped might be because the build process is creating the identity directory in the old location and as part of the XDG migration, um, you know, it, it tries to migrate from the old path to the new path and, uh, and it basically wipes out the new one if the, if the old directory exists. Um, and so I did a PR to change that um and okay pointed out that there was a discussion when that original xdg pr was put up that if if the copy you know failed halfway through and uh sorry if the move uh of of the directory failed halfway through and and so therefore you've only got corrupt data in the new location um then the idea was that uh you know when you do a move operation, obviously you, you like copy it across and then remove the old one. So if the old one hadn't been removed yet, then the assumption is that the move hadn't completed successfully. 
and you could move the entire thing over again. Um, uh, I can see that logic, um, but it just also means that in this case, that the identity is getting wiped out by a, by an empty directory. Um, I think, I think that's what's happening. Um, so yes, uh, Bye. Bye. I've got some visitors. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, uh, there's that, um, I need to think about how we tackle it. Well, I want to try and see if I can find out why that directory is getting created in the first place. Um, because I couldn't, from a quick glance, I couldn't see, see it. Um, uh, failing that, I might just change it on the feature mark two branch and um, we can move on for the moment because I think, you know, once, once everything moves to XTG proper and we don't have this starting place of a pre XTG world, then we don't need to worry about the migration scripts either. Um, anyway, the other thing I looked at yesterday was, um, Pandora, uh, the Pandora skills failing in the CI at the moment, um, and tracked it down to, um, it's it's failing to install the system packages that are defined as its dependencies. And the problem's actually been fixed already in Paco, which is our our system cross system package manager uh utility. Um but that uh is in an MSM update that is still waiting to be added to core. So it's not in the last made last uh, release of core, so therefore it's not in the CI. So, um, I. Where are we on releasing another minor version of core? Uh, well, I feel like my, I was kind of hoping that we could get the the next the next XTG piece in, so that that way core was completely XTG compatible um, before doing it. Um, but my focus, like with the Mark II image just completely being going haywire, the, my focus kind of moved over to there. Um, but, um, yeah, so I was thinking of having, uh, trying to get the, the final XTG pieces in and then cutting the release. Um, hmm. Is there other things that we really need from it? Is it's the test? Uh, mostly the testing stuff. Testing stuff, yeah. So that we can promote some of the stuff that's sitting on the Mark II branch of skills on, into the marketplace. I mean, we could always do it. Yeah, multiple point releases, can't we? Yeah, we can. Just at this point, without our release manager, it's how much work does Gaz want to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do well, it, it kind of feels safer to. to do it the other way around, like to, to do a point release without the new XDG stuff anyway, because, you know, as much as we, um, uh, review code, uh, there's, you know, as we are seeing with this, um, the previous XDG changes, there are, there, there's always things that slip through the cracks. Um, once you start actually testing it in the wild. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do a point release, uh, with, everything current um and then we'll do the xdg oh, stuff would a point release now to include some of the xdg stuff would that still break things that stuff's in dev isn't it uh no well the xdg the first xdg stuff um is already in the previous point release so the next oh. xdg stuff is the the only xdg things left are the skills okay yeah Um, yeah, I might do that and that way it'll just, it won't put pressure to, to, um, release the skills XDG stuff in a point release before it's actually had a chance to be tested, you know, for a couple of weeks on dev. Um, is that stuff going in data? Uh, it is going in the, uh, <laughs> the, the... Uh, what is it? 
dot local share. Um, yes, it is the data directory, but that's, it is. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Mike, I don't know if you are wildly familiar with XDG, but if, you, if there's any better place that you can think of for skills to go that is XDG compatible, um, the XDG data home seems like the best place. That seems seems more reasonable than dot config since, I mean, skills could contain some data, right, that they, it goes with them, so it makes sense to put them in local share. Yeah. Yeah. The Mycroft configs, of course, would make more sense than dot com config, but... Yes, they go in config, and the logs, I think, are going in cache, so... Okay. Um... Is the TTS cache and stuff going in there too? That is a good question. It should, if it's not already. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Actually, I think that... I think some of that cache was still in temp. I don't know. I'm not sure that got moved. But we'll have to look. Hmm. I mean, if it's in temp, that's fine, but... It would, yeah, I think uh, it was intent just to keep, you know, the life cycle of the files shorter. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything like, like, you know, I don't think the cache director does stuff like temp does where, it, you know, after, I don't know what, what the dates are, but after a while it just blows away older files. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, worth a look. Um, yeah, so but for the Pandora, um, in the short term, I'm just going to install the system packages on the Docker um, image that runs the CI and so that that will pass and let it through. So that's only going to work. That obviously won't work for any other skill that wants to install system packages um, uh, until that, um, until the MSM update um, gets in. Um, but we'll, we don't have that many skills that actually need to install their own system packages. So, um, yeah, it, I, I don't expect it to bite us too heavily in the short term and then we'll fix it. So, uh, yeah, that's me. All right. I guess that leaves me. I've spent my day in Dbus. Um, I've been doing some research maybe on how to, on how to get the uh, access point information uh, we need for the uh, Wi-Fi skill to be ha happy. Um, so I was looking at some of that. I was working with Michael on, I'm sorry, Mike on, <laughs> uh, on the code he was working on. And um, I, I added some stuff to the document. I've been writing that specifically around what Michael's doing or Mike's, what Mike's doing um, so that it's documented and it's part of the spec. Um, yeah, so that's all I've been doing. I will probably continue to do similar things tomorrow with boot sequence. Um, still some stuff I need to do the document and there's still some things I need to do in code to get the stuff that was in the skills process moved to the enclosure process. So that's probably what I'm working on tomorrow and then providing any assistance to Mike that he needs. So. Did the doc have anything about event names for like the connected, disconnected events? Or do, we, do, I, do I need to add something? Yes. Okay. It does. Great. So. Try to get that implemented tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. Anybody have anything else? All right. Oh, it's December first. One... Start your advent calendars. I got a wine advent calendar. I'm gonna go have a glass of wine. We do too. See you tomorrow. Yep. What? Yeah.